good y'all boy Ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 most fake wrestling props ever now for those who don't know a lot of times they uh the wrestlers will in wrestling companies they use certain props that are real and then they use certain props that are fake obviously because if you hit someone with some of these supposedly real props you could possibly do some real damage um the easiest one to uh, kind of pick out is a guitar if someone's using a actual real guitar it will actually cause some damage i think they have in one at one point we checked the video out uh i think it was jake the snake robbers ended up getting hit with a real guitar and he, he was never the same after that. he was seriously injured because of that real guitars do not break away like paper i'm telling you this now they usually have a hollowed out guitar that kind of breaks away so that way the wrestler it looks more impactful but the wrestler is essentially safe you hit someone with a real guitar yeah they're they're going they may have some complications may end up going to the hospital immediately so we're gonna check out some of these uh props by uh what culture wrestling I haven't checked out one of their videos in quite some time appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this one man. fake do you want to know how i know this my parents tell me every single day they ring me up and they say, Simon, there's not a real bone in your entire body. Then I cry. But you don't need yeah, to worry about up. that. And you are far more interested in professional wrestling. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Sometimes we don't do very well when it comes. I forgot that was a thing. I forgot he was walking around with a fucking fake spider in a cage. Oh my the props and frankly they look like shit so, hello my name is Simon One Culture thank you for joining me as always and yeah this is the 10 most fake looking wrestling props in history number 10 WCW attempts to use an electric chair now why did we do this because for one you aren't telling your audience that if somebody gets into the electric I think I may chair have seen this you're before. going to kill them and while some people have been murdered That's in still professional wrestling shows wild. I'm gonna let you in on a secret behind the scenes. That's wild. Nobody bro. actually died. But I don't want that in my sports entertainment. Yeah, that's... going way too end of the deep end. It that didn't go down wild, back bro. in WCW October 1991 during the Chamber of Horror match chair, at Halloween bro. Havoc, where we had the Steiners teaming with Sting and El Gigante to take on the Diamond Stud Vader, Cactus Jack and Abdullah the Butcher. And this had issues anyway, because there was so much madness going I on. Remember, even if you were sat on the I remember, I forgot what video we checked this out on. It was, it was a while back what, about this infamous match. And that's just, um, yeah, that's, that's just overkill. You couldn't really see what was happening, but that doubled when the Butcher was put in the electric chair and all of a sudden everything started to go crazy. Because if you were in the back row, it just looked like a man was sitting down and rocking a little bit. So what did World Championship Wrestling do to try and make this more entertaining? <laughs> they added pyrotechnics. And once again, I don't think this is how the process goes. They really dropped the ball when they had Abdullah foaming from the mouth as well, because that looked truly ridiculous. And you could actually go and watch this and see the fans. Nobody is actually that excited about it. They're kind of face palming and going, I wonder if I can get a refund. So this yeah. was a terrible idea, hence yeah. why nobody has ever done it again. No. And also the big twist was Abdullah the Butcher eventually came back to TV. So what did the electric chair even do? Nothing. Number Nothing. nine, the cold-blooded snake that met the Ultimate Warrior. Just before the Ultimate Warrior left the WWF for the first time in 1991, he was feuding with The Undertaker. Now, as the dead man has told us ever since, he wasn't particularly keen on this, but he was a company man, so he was gonna do it anyway. After the warrior had been buried alive, though, he felt like he needed some kind of edge, and I don't mean Adam Copeland. So he <laughs> went to Jake the Snake Roberts, who was good at this kind of stuff, who came up with a bunch of evil trials for him to do. The WWF was a weird place. It's the third we shall focus on today because the warrior had to walk through a snake pit. And when he got to the end of this, a cobra popped out of a casket. And I'm just going to tell you this. It was the fakest thing you'd ever seen in your life. Oh, it looked like a six year old had made it. And if you stared at it closely enough, I'm pretty sure it started to smile. I don't what think the, the snake did that. The ultimate what warrior the... also had to sell this like he was about to die is why it's one of my favorite moments in the history of sports entertainment. <laughs> Goofy wrestling for life, long oh may it live God. forever. Right? <laughs> Jericho's liquor bowl. The 2012 Chris Jericho CM Punk feud was great. Both mm -hmm. of them were walking around saying, oh, I'm the, the best, best in, in the, the world. world. So they had to go and settle in the ring. They tried at WrestleMania. Jericho lost, and he was so pissed off, 
he just kept beating up CM Punk. The Wizard also went in deep when it came to CM's personal choices, especially the fact that he was straight edged and didn't drink. So after he had assaulted him on one episode of Raw, mm -hmm. he went and got a bunch of booze and he was gonna force it down CM Punk's throat. Uh, it's pretty damn dark. Now this was still a pretty good segment, but it does have two provisos. One, because there was liquid all over the floor, Chris Jericho mm -hmm. did slip on his ass. But also two, he was using sugar glass so he could blast mm -hmm. CM Punk right in the head. And because it wasn't real, it basically disintegrated yeah. in his hand. Oh no. Jericho has also talked about this in one of his many books and he too understand what happened here because he's not a fool. But look, if you can just push all that to one side, like I say, was still pretty good television. Just as an aside too, Chris also spoke about pitching an idea to Vince McMahon where he would tattoo CM Punk in the middle of the ring and it would be a real tattoo. Uh, the only reason McMahon didn't do this is because he didn't understand it and he thought it would be a waste of time. I mean, go figure. Number seven, the pig carcasses. I mean, I, mean, I get CM Punk has a lot of tattoos so it, you can kind of hide it, but it would be like, why <laughs> so this was probably one of the few times my man was spot on with the nah let's not do that i don't well, i don't think we need to do that the aew double enough in 2021 the first stadium stampede match was a masterclass happening smack bang in the middle of the pandemic we all just needed some fun and we all just needed some entertainment and all elite wrestling came up with this and it provided such joy. The second version may not have reached such heights, but it was still pretty damn good, especially when it all ended with them coming out in front of a live crowd to show we were out the other end and wrestling was back. It was nice. One of the absolute <laughs> highlights of round two as well is when Wardlow and Jake Hager decided to fight in a freezer, because why wouldn't you do that? And as we zoomed into them, oh, we the... passed these pig carcasses. What? I don't mean to be that guy. But I don't think they were real. The shade of red they had over them that was meant to be the blood looked like something you use on a Christmas yeah, decoration. Yeah, that shit looked awful. And once again, I understand that you can't use real ones, but the more you looked at it, the more you started to laugh. Yeah. It just looked like a prop. I mean, it wasn't. You might as well just not have it. Just take those out. They know you're in a freezer. Just take it out. You, you didn't need it. <laughs> proper still and it didn't take away from the match or anything like that but it was a distraction because when you see it believe you me you cannot unsee it number Crash. six the cardboard metal stage at aew oh, yeah, so i that. get mad talking about this because 50 year old chris jericho said to everyone yeah sure i'll take a backwards bump off the top of the cage and go flying into some debris on the floor and all everybody wanted to talk about is that when he did land he clearly went into cardboard good what do you want to do? Kill Chris Jericho? Everyone's insane. And look, I do agree. The way that AEW shot this did make it way too obvious that he was falling into something that was going to be nice and soft. But that doesn't take away from anything else. If you put me on a chair and told me I had to fall backwards, I would think about it for a while. I don't want to fall on the floor. Sounds like it's going to hurt. And look, of course, it is the company's responsibility to make sure that the magic stays alive and you don't see things like this. Of course. But AEW learned from it. They've never done it again. First and foremost, <laughs> I just want <laughs> that shit did look fucking bad. Look at that shit, bro. <laughs> I think they could have did a different spot, bro. You could have had like some tables there, had a crash pad under the tables. So maybe not him falling on the ramp, but somewhere else. Uh, because him falling there, there's no way. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way you can fake that and then make it look good. They tried to fake it and look at that. You could tell it's just. It's like fucking cardboard, bro. Like, what are we doing? Formers to be safe. That's the best thing about pro wrestling. We can go out of our way to ensure that bad things don't happen. But yeah, sure, whatever. Was it a bad prop? Yes. Do I care? No. Number five, every cinder block ever. I mean, yeah, this is of kind course. of the same as the last one because we yeah. should probably never use this again. Because if you had a real cinder block, and you blasted it into somebody's face, <laughs> that person is dead. dead. It's the way they fall apart as soon as they make connection with anything that takes away from all of this. Because yeah. I don't think what is essentially a building block should turn into powder just because you look at it the wrong way. Yeah. You also heard the wrestler in question because they have to sell it like they are dead, even though they're clearly not. If I yeah. was in charge of a wrestling company, and there's many reasons why I'm not, 
I would just do away yeah. with this forever. Never get that much of a reaction anyway. No, I don't. It's unnecessary. Number four, Eric Rowan Spider. Oh, well, this was boy. an odd time in WWE, wasn't it? Because for ages, we tease what Eric Rowan may be hiding with other wrestlers actually seeing it being like, oh my God, I'm so terrified. I don't want to deal with that thing. When it was revealed as a spider, and it looked like some kind of mechanical toy. It was a green lit this must have been smoking something because straight away every single fan did go, well wait a minute, Wrestler X actually ran away in terror when mm -hmm. they saw this a few weeks ago. So what the hell were they so scared about? I mean, it would be like going to some kind of family Christmas and freaking out as a snake that's just a draft excluder. And this was one of those times when Vince McMahon just went, ho, 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 I'm bored of that story now, so let's just draw a line under it and move on. Which is why one week later, <laughs> Drew McIntyre squished this thing. I still can't believe that any of this happened. So this I would go as far to say this bro. was slightly offensive, given that we, the audience, were meant to buy it, and nobody in their right mind ever would. Number three, that the was great awful. American bash. So this one may be a little bit of a stretch, but it was mentioned to me and I laughed and I liked the chaos. But when NXT and AEW were fighting out week after week, all of a sudden some magical events would appear from nowhere, one of which was NXT's Great American Bash that just so happened to be booked on the same day as AEW's mm. Fighter Fest. Now, maybe this was coincidence, and for some people, everybody involved in wrestling just felt comfortable running this date. When we did get to the Great American Bash and everybody looked at the entrance way and the entrance set, it was a bit like... Well, nobody has put any effort into that at all. You want to be that guy? You could even argue that maybe, just maybe, this had been rushed in order to ensure we did have an event yeah. on a very specific day. But you wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, we definitely. don't want the internet to go crazy. Yeah. So let's just do this. Look. <laughs> And thrown together. Number two, Alexa Bliss and a seltzer mouth. So the spooky wookie in wrestling can be a little spooky bit hit I for one absolutely love it because wrestling is there to be creative. So why would you try and hold yourself back? But when it doesn't really go to plan, it is stupid. Remember when <laughs> Papa Shango made the ultimate warrior bleed green blood? Exactly. But at Extreme Rules 2022, <laughs> Alexa Bliss was taking on Charlotte. And when we were done, the Queen took Lily the doll and mm -hmm. ripped her to pieces. And this was sold to us as a very sad event. Bliss was devastated as with the commentators. They couldn't believe a doll had been ripped apart. And clearly she did have some kind of dark magic powers because all of a sudden Alexa Bliss had some stuff coming out of her mouth. I mean, at first I thought she had rabies before I realized <laughs> this was meant to be some kind of possession. The problem being, one, it didn't look like that, and two, if you stare at this closely enough, you can see the Alka-Seltzer in her mouth. And that just takes away any of the impact to begin with. I do want to point out that it's nice to try new things. And once again, if you do come up with these ideas, why wouldn't you give it a go? Yeah. But in terms of the execution, no. let's look pretty damn terrible. Number one, Papa Buck's ketchup blood. The great Al Snow once said, when it comes to blood in wrestling in 2022, everybody is screwed. Because if you do blade yourself, you've got the hardcore fans that just go, well, you clearly use the blood capsule because nobody's doing that anymore. Whereas the other mm -hmm. half of the fans have no clue, so you may as well just use a blood capsule. So you just can't win, and when it does come to this specific <clears throat> scenario, of course Matt and Nick Jackson didn't want their real father to be busted open for real. I mean, why the hell would you do that? Yeah. Once again, if you want to be that guy, wrestling is predetermined. I mean, the whole impact of the angle was just to make you go, oh my gosh, Chris Jericho and MJF had just beat up the Young Bucks' dad. And I tell you this, it was pretty damn good. It made an impact. The thing is, though, once again, when you look closely <laughs> enough, you could see that this blood was barely moving and it was really, really thick. Yeah. As if he just tried to eat a burger and ketchup had been sprayed on his face. I'm going to presume the reason for that is because this is exactly what had happened, not the yeah. burger thing, but that they were using fake blood. But once again, this was in the early days of AEW. And do you know what they have done ever since? They've learned from this and they've evolved and they've never gone back to it. That's all you can ask. Let's not forget the story Rock 2 and we still bought into it. And when we got to Chris Jericho and MGF versus the Young Plucks, it was pretty damn special. When it comes to all of that, I am giving it an up. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is the wrong video. Definitely Nobody wrong props video. in wrestling that look absolutely pants. Make sure you let us know in the comments below. Hey, man, this was a good one. Uh, to go back down memory lane for some of the cringe props and segments once again obviously certain stuff they can and can do because you don't want the wrestler to actually get hurt so you gotta make the illusion that they're really hurt you know so but comment down below let me know what's the fakest prop you've seen at a wrestling show event or a match let me know 
down below, man. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150k. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.